guys, and welcome to season three of Cooking with Remy. Let's get cooking. Oh my God, guys. First up, hi. How gorgeous was the new intro? We've got new banners. The website is currently under construction. It's coming back. We've got a Miss Remy rebrand happening. It's going to be amazing. It's been a long time since I've seen you guys. I've missed you so much. But if you follow me on Instagram, TikTok, my vlog channel, you know I've been around just doing a lot of stuff. The Cooking with Remy Instagram has been popping. We got verified. If you guys don't follow that, please go follow that. Also, in case you missed it, I may or may not have been on the Drew Barrymore show, which was amazing. We did a Cooking with Remy segment. I've been a busy bee, but I'm back and ready to bring you guys an amazing episode for season three of Cooking with Remy. Today, we're going back to my roots, Korean cooking. Also, we're paying homage to season one, episode one of Cooking with Remy. We did Korean recipes, but today I'm gonna make them even easier for you guys. We're gonna be making three really easy recipes. We're also gonna be making one on the Cooking with Remy Instagram, so go check that out. And let's get into what's on the menu. First up, we are making one of my absolute favorite comfort foods. If you guys like soup as much as I do, if maybe you've been drunk in Koreatown at like 2 a.m. and the only thing that's open is BCD Tofu House, then you've tried this. We're making Sundabu, which is a spicy Korean tofu stew. It is so warming, it's delicious, it's comforting, and just like the most amazing food for a cold winter day. Next up, we're making garam jim, which is a steamed egg. I love this so much for breakfast or pretty much like any time. We all know how much I love eggs. If you've ever been to Korean barbecue, they probably bring it out as a side dish for you. It's so easy to make, super delicious, and it's just a great side dish or meal on its own. And last but not least, we're doing a little Korean American fusion. We're doing a Korean fried chicken bowl which is super easy to prep, makes an amazing lunch, and best of all, uses the air fryer. And you all know how much I love my air fryer. And for the bonus recipe, which you guys can check out on the Cooking with Remy Instagram, we're doing a 15 minute tteokbokki, which is basically like a shortcut version from episode one, season one. So if you guys love that and you want a quicker one, check that one out. On that note, I missed you guys again. I'm sorry I was gone and let's get cooking. So we're gonna begin with our spicy tofu stew. I have here a traditional Korean pot. I actually bought this one on Amazon. You can buy it at an Asian grocery store or you can just use a regular pot. But obviously this just makes it a little more traditional. So I have it on a hot plate. I will say I think it's the best to do it on an actual stove with a real flame. But again, use whatever you can and let's get started. So we're starting with our pot. I have it on medium high heat and I'm gonna go in with a little bit of sesame oil right in the bottom, about a tablespoon or so. That's gonna start smoking and we're gonna put in our two cloves of garlic and our quarter of a white onion. All right, that's gonna cook quickly, so we're just gonna stir. After this cooks down for a couple minutes, I'm gonna throw in the whites of three green onions. So again, these are the white parts of the green onions. The green part I did chop, but I put it to the side and we'll use as a garnish later. After this is cooked down for a few minutes and you can see the onions are getting translucent, I'm gonna go in with a tablespoon or two, depending on how spicy you want it, of gochugaru, which are Korean spicy chili flakes. I like mine spicy, but not too spicy. I'm also adding in a tablespoon of this Korean beef broth powder. This stuff is super concentrated and I got it from my aunt actually, but you can also just use beef bouillon or skip it if you want overall, but it just adds more flavor. And then give that all a nice mix. Then we're gonna pour in our soup base. Now for this, you can either use chicken broth, traditional anchovy broth. I'm using a beef bone broth, or you can use water. I'm just gonna pour it in so that the pot is full and then bring it to a boil. Ollie's gonna taste test the broth. What a beautiful little sip you took. Ooh, oh my God. It's good, right? It's good. <laughs> <laughs> Just the broth. Gonna throw in my shrimps, get them all nice in there so they can cook and poach. Some mushrooms. You can do enoki. You can do pretty much whatever mushrooms you'd like or any vegetables. Get that all nice and stirred around. And then for the most important part, we have the tofu for the tofu stew. Now this is soon tofu or like very soft tofu. When you see people making that chocolate pudding tofu recipe, this is the tofu you wanna use. It's pretty much like silk almost. And it's kind of squishy. It kind of feels like one of those toys you played with as a kid, but this is what you wanna look for at the Korean store. I'm just gonna squeeze little chunks in. I like bigger chunks in mine. And my favorite way to add the chunks is just use a big spoon and put little plops in like so. It doesn't look cute, but it tastes cute. Chunks, chunks of tofu. And then just gently give it a stir. As you can see, the shrimp is already cooked. These cook very quickly and you don't wanna overcook them. So put them in, keep it nice like medium heat and everything can just cook together. So for this soup, you can add in really whatever you want. I personally like to order the seafood one whenever I go to restaurants. So I like to add in full shrimps with the head because I think the heads are the best part. It also often comes with like mussels. You can get beef. You can just get a vegetable one. Today I'm doing shrimp and mushrooms, but again, you can add pretty much anything under the sun. All right, so our soup is pretty much done. You don't have to do this, but it is my favorite part. Usually when the soup comes to your table, it's pretty much like boiling hot. They give you a raw egg on the side and you just crack it in yourself. 
And for the final garnish, as I said, we saved the green part of the green onions. I'm just going to sprinkle these on top. And that is our 15 minutes or less sundubu. It's so good. Also, please don't kill me for my pronunciation. I don't speak Korean. I just love the food. But it smells absolutely amazing. We've got the eggs in here. I like to save my egg for last personally. But we've got the shrimps. Look how perfectly cooked these are. <gasps> it looks so good. The broth smells amazing. And again, this is just like the most comforting meal. Got to get some tofu in here. Here we go. Again, with this, you can put in as little or as much of any ingredient that you want. It's super customizable and absolutely perfect and hot. Oh my God. It's so, so good. Honestly, better than when you go to those tofu houses. Oh my God, the silken tofu just like melts in your mouth. Please make this. Thank me later. Let's move on to the next one. For our next recipe, we are making a Korean steamed egg. This is seriously so easy to make. Again, I'm using the Korean pot. Your amount of ingredients is gonna depend on whatever size pot you have. Just make sure you have a lid, a pot, that's all you need. So my pot's a little on the bigger side. I'm gonna use six eggs today, but if you have a smaller pot, use less. And I'm just gonna crack these into a bowl. Ooh, one. Let's do one hand. Three. Oh wait, let's do two. And now we're just gonna give it a good whisk and get them nice and fluffy. Make sure it's nice and smooth. If you wanna get this mixture even more smooth and clump free, you can run it through a sieve, but I really don't care because I'm not gonna waste any eggs. So just keep whisking. Now we're gonna need a quarter to a half cup of some sort of liquid. You can use water, you can use stock. I'm using chicken stock, but again, whatever you'd like and just pour it in there while you're whisking. To this mixture, I'm just gonna add in a little bit of sesame oil, maybe like a teaspoon or so just for extra flavor. And then I'm gonna add in salt and pepper and that's it. Back to our Korean pot, I have this over medium, medium low heat. If you're having it on the stove, have it on low. This is just not that powerful. And I'm gonna put a little bit of sesame oil into the bottom of the pan, just the slightest little touch. And I'm just gonna use a silicone brush to make sure all the sides are covered so our egg doesn't stick. And then I'm just gonna slowly stir it. If you can see these curds are starting to form in the heat, pull away from the sides and just keep stirring until it's about 75 to 80% cooked all the way through. It takes a little bit of patience and it takes a while, but I promise you it's worth every single minute. I personally like to have this for breakfast sometimes. Just a nice way to start my morning, a delicious protein packed breakfast that's comforting and warm. Okay guys, after five minutes, our egg is pretty much like 80% cooked or so. I've been fluffing it. The curds are nice and delicious and soft. It looks so good. I'm gonna pop the lid on let it cook for another like two to three minutes and we're pretty much done. Mm -hmm. All right guys, our egg is done cooking. It's fluffy and delicious. I'm gonna top it with some green onions and sesame seeds and it's ready to eat. That is the finished recipe. We have our Korean steamed egg. Little notes, first of all, this is like an elevated scrambled egg. If you want the bits to be a little smaller, keep mixing it. I like mine to be a little bit more bite-sized. If you like big, giant, fluffy chunks of egg, then stir it a little bit less, but overall it all tastes amazing and you're gonna love it. Last but not least, we are making a Korean fried chicken bowl. This thing is so easy to make, it's so flavorful. If you are a busy, on the go kind of person, you can meal prep these, throw them in a box, take them on the go. You're gonna love it, let's get into it. So we're gonna begin by seasoning our breading mixture. I have here panko breadcrumbs, and in here I'm just gonna add my favorite seasonings. Of course we've got salt, pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder. And then we're gonna give this a little mix. We're coating the chicken in a sauce, but I still like to season every step that I can. For our protein today, I'm using chicken thighs that I've made sure to pat dry. You can use chicken breasts if you'd like, but I just feel like the thighs are more flavorful and juicy and personally just my favorite. So I've got them nice and dry. You guys know the drill, dry hand, wet hand. Taking the wet hand, putting it into our egg mixture. This is simply just one egg that I've cracked up and mixed together. Get that nice and coated and then we're gonna drip, 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 and put it over into our breadcrumbs. And then with our dry hand, we're just gonna coat, make sure it's nicely pat in. And if you really want it crispy, you can always take it and put it back into the egg mixture and double coat if you're feeling crazy. If not, a single coat is totally fine. We're feeling crazy today. We're feeling adventurous. Uh, it's gonna get crispy and you can fry these if you'd like, but for a little bit of a healthier option, we're gonna air fry today. I'm just gonna finish breading these and then we'll pop them in the air fryer. Okay, while the chicken is cooking in the air fryer, I'm doing it at 380 degrees for 15 minutes. I'm gonna flip it halfway. Let's get working on our sauce. As I said, this is quick and easy, so I'm just gonna make the sauce in the microwave. You can do this on the stove if you'd like, but our base is hot honey. You guys know my favorite is the AR's Hot Southern Mild Honey. Use whatever honey you'd like. And I'm gonna do like two tablespoons in a bowl. One, 
and two right in there. To make it a little spicier and to give it that Korean kick, I'm gonna put in about a teaspoon of our gochugaru. I'm just eyeballing it, but about a teaspoon or so just to give it a little kick. We're gonna do some salt. I love salt and honey mixed together. Some pepper, about a teaspoon of garlic powder. Same with the onion powder. And then lastly, like three to four tablespoons of soy sauce. I'm gonna give this a little mix and then put it in the microwave for about a minute, give it a mix again and see if it needs anything else. Okay, for the sides of the bowl, I wanna do some sort of vegetable. I personally love bok choy in any Asian style anything. These are little baby bok choy. I slice them down the middle, clean them, and then you can saute them, but I personally love to blanch mine. Basically, I just have a big pot of hot water here and I'm just gonna put these in here for maybe a minute or so till they just start to lightly cook but still have that nice crunch. Just give them a little stir. They're gonna turn bright green. I'm gonna pull them out and then serve them on the side. To finish up our sauce, to make it nice and thick, I'm gonna make a slurry, which we've talked about in past episodes. Basically, I'm gonna take a little cornstarch, mix it with some water, and then add that to the sauce, and it's gonna act as a thickener. I'm gonna do about a teaspoon of cornstarch to like two teaspoons of water or so. We're gonna add this back into our sauce and then microwave for one more minute. For our starchy side, I am a big fan of these pre-cooked little microwavable, the chicken is ready, the little, little microwavable rices. You can make your own fresh rice if you'd like, but again, we're doing quick, we're doing easy. Pop this in the microwave for 90 seconds and we're ready to go. Now we are ready to plate. We've got our rice from the microwave, fresh cooked. Just plop this down. It is hot. Ooh, just like that. Boom. All right, guys, that is our finished Korean fried chicken bowl. It smells absolutely amazing. I'm actually going to top it with a little bit more hot honey just because I love hot honey. I love the juxtaposition of the sweet with the spicy, with the salty, with the crunchy. Let's go in for a taste test. You can hear the crunch. Hoo hoo. Ooh hoo hoo. Bite of rice, bite of chicken all together. Mm, 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 please hold. Mm. I swear, honey, soy sauce, and gochugaru go together so well. I hope you guys enjoyed episode one of season three of Cooking with Remy. Be sure to go check out that bonus recipe on Cooking with Remy's Instagram. I'm so excited for the season. Comment down below what you guys wanna see, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!